Earlier this week, AstraZeneca dropped some jaw-dropping data on a new GLP-1 pill that could reshape the weight loss landscape. That's right, another GLP-1 weight loss pill. Hopefully one of will come out of all this development. With this one, patients saw nearly 6% body weight loss in just four weeks. And that's not all. This breakthrough drug is part of a powerful combo strategy that could make it more effective than anything we've seen. Stick around to find out how AstraZeneca's new treatments could be the next leap forward in the fight against obesity. Welcome to The Downsized. I'm Christopher Durham, here to keep you in the loop with the latest on GLP-1s and obesity treatments. If you're new to our channel, let me take a moment to share a bit of our own story. My wife, Lorraine, and I have been on this GLP-1 adventure together for more than a year. Since I started using GLP-1s in September 2023, I've lost 81 pounds, and together Lorraine and I have shed a combined 130 pounds, thanks to terzepatide, Manjaro, and Zepbound. It's been a life-changing experience for us, and we're excited to share everything we're learning along the way. Before I begin, just a quick reminder. We're not doctors. This is our personal adventure. We're sharing our experiences. We're sharing our research. We're sharing the insights we've gained from talking to a lot of you folks in the community. We're not sharing medical advice. I'm not a doctor. So please consult a healthcare provider before starting any new treatments. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're new here. First, a little background on Obesity Week. Obesity Week was held this year, November 2nd through the 6th in San Antonio, Texas. It is produced by the Obesity Society. Founded in 1982, the Obesity Society is the leading professional society focused on obesity science, treatment, and prevention. Obesity Week covers the full spectrum of obesity science. It's a unique event where you can see everything from diet and lifestyle interventions to cutting edge medical and surgical solutions. This is super wonky, super medical, super scientific, and very cool. If you're interested in seeing everything that happened at Obesity Week, or at least all the presentations, you can actually buy access to all the presentations on demand through Obesity Week on demand sessions. This option offers access to session content without needing conference registration. Now, it costs a couple hundred bucks, but if you really want to dive in deep into the science on all of this, they have it available for you. So check it out. Just search Obesity Week 2024 and you can find it. Let's talk about AstraZeneca's presentation on Monday, November 4th at Obesity Week. In the presentation, they came out swinging with a clear message. We play to win. AstraZeneca may be behind giants Nova Nordisk and Eli Lilly in the obesity space, but they are not holding back. They arrived at Obesity Week with three promising assets that reflect their ambitious goal to move beyond short-term weight loss and tackle obesity as one of the world's biggest health issues. Sharon Barr, AstraZeneca's EVP of Biopharmaceuticals R&D, didn't mince words when she said, when we think about how we're playing in this space, this is AstraZeneca, and we play to win. And if we didn't think we had a highly competitive molecule, we would not further invest in that molecule and be moving forward rapidly through clinical development. Their lineup includes a whole raft of things, and it gets a little confusing as we talk about it because they're all named numbers. So AZD, whatever the number is. The first we're going to talk about is AZD5004, which is an oral GLP-1 receptor agonist developed in collaboration with Ecogene, which has recently entered two phase 2b trials. The second one is AZD6234, a long-acting amylin drug, also in phase 2. The third is an innovative combination of AZD6234 with a GLP-1 glucagon dual agonist. AZD9550, set to enter phase 2b within the next six months. On Monday, AstraZeneca shared the first data on AZD5004, showing an average weight loss of 5.8% over four weeks in patients with type 2 diabetes during a phase 1 trial. Barr emphasized that these were patients with diabetes, a group that often experiences less weight loss than those without the condition and hinted that AZD5004 could have a differential effect on weight loss when tested on broader obesity trials. Notably, there were no serious adverse events which strengthened its case as a potential game changer. What makes AZD5004 particularly competitive, according to Barr, is that it can be taken with or without food, which adds flexibility for patients. 
AstraZeneca is also exploring how it could work alongside other treatments, like their SGLT2 inhibitor, Farzixa, for patients with type 2 diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and heart failure, or their oral PCSK9 inhibitor, AZD0780, for dyslipidemia. This multifaceted approach could set AZD5004 apart in the market as more than just another GLP-1 option. But AstraZeneca's efforts don't stop there. They also introduced AZD6234, a long-acting amylin receptor agonist, as a potential alternative solution for patients who cannot tolerate GLP-1s. This amylin drug works on a different pathway, focusing on slowing gastric emptying, reducing appetite, and promoting glucagon release. According to Regina Frisch Danielson, SVP of Early Cardiovascular and Metabolic Work, the Phase 1 trial for AZD6234 showed a good tolerability profile with no safety concerns at any of the doses and encouraging weight loss across all doses. Frisch Danielson also mentioned that AZD6234 could help address muscle loss, a side effect some patients experience with other weight loss medications like Wegovy and Zepbound. Looking ahead, AstraZeneca is working on a fixed-dose combination of AZD-6234 with AZD-9550, a GLP-1 glucagon dual agonist. This combo could become a once-weekly treatment that maximizes weight loss while protecting organs. While the initial data is promising, more data from more extensive phase two studies will be essential to see if these treatments stand out in the crowded field. Financially, AstraZeneca's ambitions in the obesity space are significant, with their projections pointing to a new era of growth by 2030. While BMO Capital Markets projects a conservative revenue estimate of $865 million by 2032, AstraZeneca's own projections peak at $5 billion. Barr confirmed that they're looking at external opportunities saying AstraZeneca is not stopping there as they explore other molecules and partnerships to build a more robust obesity portfolio. Of course, AstraZeneca isn't alone in this space. Companies like Viking Therapeutics also presented data at Obesity Week. Viking's oral GLP-1 GIP dual agonist VK2735 demonstrated strong weight loss results, adding to the competition in, in what will become a crowded field. It's not today. Today, it's a two-player field. Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk. Wagovi and Zepbound. Semaglutide and Terzepatide. Two players. So the more we talk about new medications, the more we talk about pills, the more we talk about tests and launches, the more hopeful I become. The more I believe that these medications will usher in a new era of health and that the prices will come down and that accessibility will be available eventually to all. AstraZeneca's determination to play to win, combined with their innovative drug combinations and commitment to more patient-friendly options, could make a substantial impact. We'll be watching closely as they progress through their trials and share more data with the world. Thank you all for watching. If you found this update helpful, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to stay on top of the latest GLP-1 treatments and weight loss strategies. I'm Christopher Durham, and we are The Downsized. Uh -huh.